word of God. I beseech you, therefore, brethren. Right? You know that one? That you would transform your mind by the renewing of God through the word of God, through his spirit, through being accountable to other people who can help you walk this life, even with the troubles and the struggles. Like I said, connection brings protection. But when you're living, walking by faith and have the right prize in mind, you don't mind taking risks for God because you know there's a cause. And you also know that if you fail, let's just say, I don't believe you really failed if you gave it your best shot. But not giving a shot, he was upset, right? He gave, he gave the talents to different people and the ones who used it he was happy with, but the ones who didn't use it, that's who he was upset with. So let's not let the enemy keep us in spiritual lockdown. Well, I better not say this. I might get in trouble. What if I look foolish? What if, what if, what if, what if? Ah, that's, that doesn't take any faith to do that. So in light of this hope that we have of the new body, we live with a daring passion and know that our time spent in this body is also time we're not present with the Lord. So, okay, Adam and Eve did sin. We did get a deteriorating body, but we're promised a whole new version, and I'm going to make the best of what I got while I'm here. The path we walk is chartered by faith, not by what we see with our eyes. And that's where Eugene Peterson said, it's what we trust in but don't yet see that keeps us going. It's what we trust in but don't yet see that keeps me going. It's what I have my faith in, what the prize is. I'm pressing for a prize for an eternal weight of glory that I'm going to carry that makes suffering in this life a little easier, just a little easier to deal with and tolerate. I keep an eternal perspective. So helpful. And then Eugene Peterson says, do you, you suppose a few ruts in the road or rocks in the path are going to stop us? Say no. <laughs> when the time comes, we'll be plenty ready to exchange exile from God for homecoming with God. Amen? All right, I'm almost done. Thank you, Nate. <laughs> Holy Spirit. And this is really good news. I love this. This is just a commentary from the voice version. It says, Holy Spirit transforms believers so they're conformed into the image of Jesus. Yes? Agree? Yeah. You've been conformed into his image. It says that in 2 Corinthians, that we are being transformed into his likeness with ever-increasing glory. King James says we go from glory to glory. Awesome. Thank you, Father, that we can do that. that you're, you're giving me an ability to be conformed to the image of Jesus. But follow me on this, okay? It says this change means that believers embody Jesus' death through the suffering that we go through and participate in his present risen life. That's a mouthful, right? Because nobody likes suffering. We get it. But that's what Paul said in, in Philippians 2. He said, I want to be found in him, and I want to know the fellowship of his sufferings, and the power of his resurrection. Yeah. So as we're doing things, as we're loving difficult people, right? Do you ever have to hug a porcupine of a person? But you know the Lord is telling you to do this? That's a form of suffering. It's a form of suffering to be accused of things that you know didn't happen to you. But I was talking to Boris, our bass player. He wrote a book about how the corporate life can be so full of landmines. And we, we were doing a little video shoot so he can advertise his book. And it's like... When, when another coworker came to him and gave him bad news, he had a choice not to react right away. It's because we have a spirit inside of us of God that says, wait a minute, pray about this, hold on, don't, don't be emotionally hijacked yet. That's up to us not to let that happen. So we do experience some suffering, but we also participate in his risen life. And then it says, ultimately, that experience is through the resurrection of our body in the future. Say amen. amen. Happy about that. But it also consists of an inward renewal in the midst of the challenges and troubles of our daily existence now. We still have that inner man being renewed day by day, that flushing out of the old wrong thinking and lining up, conforming our minds with the word of God. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, right? You know that one? That you would transform your mind by the renewing of God through the word of God, through his spirit, through being accountable to other people who can help you walk this life, even with the troubles and the struggles. Like I said, connection brings protection. When you're with other people that have a like-minded walk with the Lord, they're going to help you have a stronger immune system. And the, all this isolation didn't help that one, did it? Our hope is therefore 
not a release from our bodies, but a resurrection of our bodies. All right? Can you say that with me? Our hope is not a release from our bodies, but a resurrection of our bodies. So the life that's inside us now will show outside as well. Man, those two ladies in the bay in their wheelchairs are real happy about this one. So even on the outside, it's going to show. I'm going to be able to get in a swimsuit again. Hallelujah. While we still suffer, this hope of a bodily resurrection is a matter of faith, not sight. I walk by faith, not by sight. Very specifically, the faith of knowing that I'm going to have a new resurrected body on the other side. And then I love this one too in the message in 1 Corinthians 15. Uh, I'll be spending a little bit more time on resurrection. It says the seed is sown in natural, right? The seed sown is natural, but the seed grown is supernatural. Get the picture? On this side, gravity's pulling us down. On the other side, we're walking in the supernatural physical body. But the same seed, same body, what a difference! From when it goes down in physical mortality to when it's raised up in spiritual immortality. That's, that's the hope that we have, and I'm almost done here. I just want to think through a couple things with you because this idea that God doesn't want one person to perish, often the biggest critics and the people that, that complain the loudest are the strongest witnesses when they get saved. And this is a story that a lot of you might know about a man named Lee Strobel, who was an attorney who was working for a newspaper in Chicago. His wife went to Bill Hybels Church and got saved. And there was a series of steps that happened before she went to the church. They were in a rush, a pizza parlor, and their daughter got a big piece of gum out of one of those machines, you know, those big balls, and she started choking on it. And one of the people at the other tables helped them get the gum out and, you know, they were very grateful, and the lady said to Bill Hobbles and his wife, oh, uh, it, you weren't lucky that I was here. The Lord told me to come here tonight. <laughs> and, uh, and she's like, what? The Lord told you what? You know, should we call the psych ward here or what? You're hearing voices? But the lady knew that that lady being in the restaurant allowed her daughter to be alive. And then it just started to really tick away, and her husband was getting more and more upset about this. So long story short, he goes up to one of his co-workers at the newspaper who he knew was a Christian, and he says, hey, I need you to help me. My wife joined your cult. Help me understand how I can talk her out of it. And the guy, like right in the moment, whoever this guy was that was his co-worker was so present to the moment that he kept his cool. He didn't say, well, I'm insulted that you would think I'm in a cult or anything. And the guy just immediately comes back and says, oh, that's easy. You want to discredit your wife's belief? Just discredit the resurrection. The whole thing is a house of cards that will collapse if Jesus didn't literally die from the dead, rise from the dead, sorry. How many of us would have known to say that? But you do now. The resurrection's real. 500 people saw him, right? So then you see this long journey this attorney goes on to disprove the resurrection. Flies to Rome like he's talking to people all over the planet to try to make the case. And he doesn't, he gets saved. And the scene when he gets saved is very powerful. And he comes in, he lets his wife know that he decided to, to receive Jesus and that he's a Christian now and that he was sorry for persecuting her for her faith. I have a friend who's on the board of Lee Strobel Ministries today. They've sold over 15 million copies of his books, okay? Think of the impact global impact of one person getting saved. And it was a, a Christian in a pizza parlor that was praying which restaurant to go to, and the Lord let, let, leads her here. And then it's a co-worker at the newspaper who didn't have the title of minister, but had enough presence to be present to the moment and say, easy, disprove it by disproving the resurrection. And within a couple of years, the guy's a Christian. And now he's sold 15 million books to help other people become Christians. See how it works? Anybody think you're not qualified to serve the Lord? 